Uh, before we jump into our primary topic, uh, let's turn to Martin. And uh, Martin, what do you have for us for our module of the week this week? Thanks, John. This week, I thought we would talk about the content security policy module, which adds a content security policy header to allow your Drupal site to inform browsers of trusted sources for JavaScript, CSS, and other external resources. It's a module that was originally created in July of 2017. It has an 8.x-1.19 release ready for Drupal 10. It is very actively maintained, and it currently has 23 open issues, nine of which are bugs, which is pretty impressive considering the, the module is in use by almost 16,000 sites. The module is maintained by Gapple, who also maintains a permissions policy module, which uh, has some similar features in that it sets a header to control availability of browser features and APIs to a web application. So um, content security policy is really a header that provides a layer of security to detect and mitigate certain types of attacks, particularly cross-site scripting and other data injection attacks. That CSP header, as some call it, makes it possible for server administrators to reduce or eliminate vectors by which those cross-site scripting attacks can occur um, by specifying specifically which domain should be allowed um, to, to uh, pull scripts into the browser to be executed. A, uh, a sort of compliant browser will then only execute scripts from those domains um, and ignoring any others that might be called by any content within the website. Now, the, uh, the lack of a CSP header within your website will be cited by test tools like our testing tools like Lighthouse, PageSpeed Insights, and Web Page Test. So even in terms of sort of trying to maximize your scores in testing with those kinds of tools, it's definitely a best practice. Um, the, the Drupal module provides a UI to manage those directives in your site's uh, CSP header and will automatically optimize the policy to remove duplicate directives and reduce header length. The module also includes a content security policy extras submodule, which provides additional security hardening uh, features by altering core services. And it also dispatches an event which can allow other modules to alter policies for each request. So if there's something specialized a particular site is doing, you can have that CSP uh, header, you know, sort of altered to match. And it also includes a number of uh, options for logging any policy violations, including uh, pushing those out to third-party services. Now, Nick, I gather you have some experience with this module, so uh, why don't you give us a rundown on that? Yeah, so the module itself is, is great. I mean, it gives you almost every single option under the sun to you to, to fine tune those rules. Um, and it also gives some real nice um, quality of life things. So for example, some of the common things are, you know, CSS, where CSS can load from, where JavaScript can load from, but you can also control things like where your iframe can load from. Um, and almost every directive has a few sub things like, can you load from the self, you know, from the domain itself? Do you allow unsafe eval? Do you allow unsafe inline? And rather than forcing you to type those, you know, few that are always, you know, options, there's just checkboxes for them. So the module itself is great. CSP headers themselves. I, I mentioned when you said that this was going to be the module leak, I mentioned I have a love-hate relationship with it. And uh, Stephen correctly pointed out that my hate part of that relationship is with CSPs themselves. They will break your site 100% of the time. You won't get it right out of the box. Um, so you do need to test it extensively in the staging environment. Um, you also need to test it locally and you generally have to test it on production because um, sometimes those URLs change depending on which environment you're in. And if you miss one of those, your site just will break. You also have to test a lot of pages because different pages, especially with Drupal, load different libraries and you'll hit some edge cases um, that you weren't thinking about or a service will change where they're loading an endpoint from and things will just break. So highly recommend that you use this module because it makes, you know, testing and changing very, very easy. Um, but you do need to be prepared if you're using CSP headers, which you should, that things will occasionally break in your site inexplicably. Um, it does have a logging option, not just to the third party URI, but also to the database log. So if you want to kind of see what kinds of things are being, um, 
denied on your site, you can kind of see them in one place. But one of my biggest, one of the other biggest complaints I have generally about this is that, especially on more complex sites, the log is very, very, very noisy. So finding out specifically what is breaking on your site and what you want to be blocked, um, this can, can take a little bit of work. So I've I've got a very simplistic question here, and and I don't know, maybe nobody here can answer it, but I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna try anyway, right? So like it feels like this is pretty important, right? As far as like good kind of like security health for your site, why doesn't Drupal do this kind of by default? Why why is the module necessary, or is it just simply that the module is is a um, admin to to manage these these headers? It it's it's very much an, an advanced kind of configuration thing. It really should remain in contrib, definitely. Um, if Drupal kind of provided CSP headers out of the box, a lot of sites would just be broken. And not everybody needs them. I mean, if you're, I mean, that maybe that's not true. You you really should have CSPs. <laughs> I take that back. Strike it from the record. Um, it just takes a lot of configuration. Like I said, you, I don't think I have ever installed the CSP module and not had something unexpectedly break, um, yeah. Yeah. both in testing and in production. I, I it, it just has never happened. Um, it's complex and it, so I understand them not putting that in core. Um, also as new kind of requirements or changes come out, you know, we, we've had this discussion before on the show, but contrib can react a lot faster to those kinds of things. So a lot of like security based things like this, it is better to be in contrib because they can, they can react so much faster than core um, to new requirements or, or features. Um, and this module stays up pre- pretty up to date. It, it's really invaluable. If you have a Drupal site, and you're installing CSP headers, you 100% should use this module to do it. Hmm. Um, one, one of the things too, I think we explored with another client, I have a client that has like really complex um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of external libraries. And there were some that they, you know, they needed to have on the site, but they really, really wanted to lock down. So we were, I think we looked into that event to basically say only put this header on these particular pages. So for example, there was a, I think it was like an, a specific iframe that they wanted to put there, but we didn't want content editors putting it on any page. Like we wanted to restrict it to one specific page and we were able to just say, hey, inject this CSP header only in this circumstance, otherwise don't. Nick, you mentioned about how putting these headers in place can break a lot of things. I would say from a performance standpoint, I tend to be a big proponent of trying, particularly if you're using sort of one of the major host uh, Drupal hosting services that will really provide a complementary CDN anyway. I tend to be um, a proponent of trying to serve as much as possible of of any of those kinds of like JavaScript libraries, uh, web fonts, CSS libraries, serving those from the, the sort of root domain of the site. Is it accurate to say that if you take that kind of approach, you can expect fewer things to be broken by using this module? Um, absolutely, but a lot of a lot of my bigger clients use Google Tag Manager and partner with you know big marketing agencies, um, and so not everything can be easily moved or quickly moved um, to you know the the root domain. But one of the nice, one of the flip sides, one of the nice things about this is that even if we, they have access to tag manager or something, CSB header means that they can't just add whatever they want. If they add some third party tool, CSB header is going to block it, right? So they, they still, it allows, it gives them access to tag manager. They can change events or change, you know, what they need to do. But if they're adding another tool, they still need to talk to a developer so that can be vetted because if they just add a third party script, CSP is going to be like, well, nope, we're not loading that. And um, and then they kind of have to go through the correct pipeline. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. I've definitely talked to developers who were held accountable for performance on the site, but it was really the marketing team that was using Tag Manager to load a bunch of extra things that was actually the cause of some of the big performance problems. So potentially using this as a bit of a, a, a firewall to prevent overuse of Tag Manager is also a, an interesting use case. You, uh, 
that you just highlighted uh, every marketing department's worst worst nightmare is like, hey, we want to add a tracking script to our site, and now we have to go talk to our developers to get to get the the code changed in order to do it. Which is like, you know, it's a little bit of a, a I don't know, I don't know if it's necessarily chicken and egg sort of thing, but it's like, what's what's better? Is it better to be open and allow you to enter any scripts as long as they're coming from tag manager or is it better to not just randomly load scripts that nobody that you know aren't being vetted um obviously the latter seems like a better approach but i can i can understand folks in uh, in marketing marketing departments or content editors or, or even site owners being kind of annoyed by that and i have a few things i'd like to add so first when you install this module there's a report only mode that you can turn on which is a great way to start with this because you'll get in your in your browser header information, you'll get report back of in your console of all the things that are broken. Huh. It's a great way for you to flip the module on, put it in report only mode, and you'll see stuff coming in the console of things yep. that are busted. It's a great way to yep. introduce to it. Um, the second thing I want to bring up is that we we've, we've been chatting about like making CSP work for the for the um, libraries that you know about, right? And make it work with the site and the things that you want to make happen in your website. Yep. But once you turn on CSP and get it working, it will also, part of the beauty of it is that if you have a database and people could put content on your site, if someone injects something into your site, into the database, like a, a cross-site scripting injection, this would block it. So it's not yeah. just the libraries that you're working in and knowing about. Once this is activated, it will block the things that you don't know about. Yeah. It's it's an important point of what this is all about. Or when you say block, up. sorry, could you just define block? Do you mean it will block it from loading or it will yes. block yeah, it from it being load. added? Uh, oh, that's well. the whole point of this. Yeah. The right. whole point of this mod of CSP is that you cannot load content from outside your domain unless you've authorized it. Wait, no, you can't even load stuff inside your domain unless you've true, authorized unless it. you've authorized it. True, right? Yes, yes. right. Like, and and it goes, and it's at every level. It's like root domain, self inline, yeah. unsafe inline, and yeah. um, external allow listed um, items. So it, it 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 also will if somebody if you're including a script or a tracker and that tracker decides to like change their change. policy and yeah. include something else, it'll prevent, it'll break that. And yeah. most times it's like, oh, all of a sudden this thing isn't working. You have to look at it. You realize that they included something. Yeah, that's fine. But it can also help yeah. you with something like, I, I'm sure it can help with things like GDPR too. Like if you're working with the company and then they start including a script from a company that isn't GDPR compliant, the CSP will block that. And you can be like, well, hey, we yeah. need to find a new, company. Whereas if you don't have a CSP, if they change that, you might not notice until you do an audit. Um, I'd be curious to know how many websites are actually using CSP or not using it at all. I mean, my out of my clients, I'd say probably 30% do. Yeah, I was going to say um, less than 50 easily. Yeah. And, and I think it's awareness too. I think it's yeah. just awareness of people knowing how important it is. Yeah. And the, and the last thing I was wondering is do you get um, do you get higher rankings? Does the ranking of your website get improved when you have CSP activated on your pages? Lighthouse calls like, it out. So I, would, it, I would assume, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would think so. I mean, it, it shows a commitment to security and uh, so I think you'd get higher ranked. So it could, it could help with your ranking maybe. I actually, it, it probably shows depends a commitment. how you configure it. I, I should say it probably depends how you configure it because if you just configure it and just allow unsafe inline. Yeah. Yeah. And allow. You know, and inline allow. Single, yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Then you could. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which you know, brings up a great point. There's a bad, there's a bad way to use CSP too, right? Yeah. <laughs> That, yeah, and that's say, actually allow one everything. of the yeah. that's one of the downsides of uh, native web components with the way that they're implemented. Like you have to allow inline CSS. Well, you don't have to if you're not using it, but 
a lot of web component implementations just do inline CSS, you know, so that's something that you generally will need to allow. But um, yeah, this module is a lifesaver. CSP itself is extremely important. Whenever I'm starting to implement it for a client, it's, I know it's going to be a headache. There's no way around it. Um, there, you will miss stuff. Um, and like Steven said, the report only option is very important and you want to run that in every environment because you'll have um, local staging production. Like if those URLs are different and they're not configured properly, then it'll block them, right? And get ready and, and be prepared to be reading the console all the time. Because uh, that's what well, we report report only mode doesn't block anything. Yeah, report. Yeah, but that so you need yeah, to yeah, run yeah. that in okay, each yeah, environment. Yeah, like, yeah. Right, yeah. you don't want to just run that in your local environment, see what's being blocked, allow that stuff, and then push that up and think that yeah, you're exactly. good to go. You you want to yeah. turn it on in report only mode, get that to production first, and kind of review things yeah. at that point. Um, so yeah, great module though. Yeah, seems seems super useful. Um, Thanks again, Martin, for uh, for bringing yet another uh, wonderful module of the week to us.